Catalan and Lizzie from Pow Gym. We're going to do a boxing workout. So this one is designed if you have a training partner and you're able to work glove to glove contact or glove and mitts. All right. So we're going to do this by rounds. We're going to keep it really basic. You can always add more. Uh, I will pause at different times to remind you of some various technical uh, tips just to make sure that you're punching properly. All right, so let's get started. We're gonna start on the jump rope. Modification is going to be uh, Lizzie doing jacks. Let me just get the crinkle out of my rope. And begin. So remember when we're jumping rope, that your hands are along the hips. They're right on the outside of the hips. You don't wanna be swinging from the shoulders. You're gonna trip. So the elbows kind of tuck in alongside the body, but your shoulders are not tense. They're pretty relaxed when you jump. You can change up your style of jack and do variations. Seal jacks, jumping jacks, jacks with your hands on your hips, and time. Take a second to stretch your calves and Achilles, making sure that you're hinging forward. If you have a sofa leg or a wall nearby, you can step up to it and stretch this way. Bringing the toe up, pressing weight forward into the foot. After you get a couple reps on each side, I want you to just roll your hips in a circle. We'll go a few times in each direction. And then the next one's going to be some backstroke. We tend to kind of hop in place, and you're just going to circle back about five times. You shouldn't feel any crunching or clicking in there either. So stay in a click-free, crunch-free, pain-free zone with this movement. Great. Now we're going to get back to getting our heart rate up. So she'll do any style jack she wants. She can change it up to even an Ali jack which is where she scissors her feet. She can zigzag her feet, front to back. Just keep going, everybody. If you're on a jump rope, and you're not very good at jump rope, you can do a basic school ground skip like I'm doing here. It doesn't matter, just keep moving. If you trip, just get back on. Notice that when I make contact on the ground, it's very light. I'm not pounding my feet at all. And time. Great. We're going to take the rope, fold it in half if you have it. Otherwise, your hands are going to go above you without the rope. I'm going to create tension on the rope, and we're going to do some squats. We're going to go 10 of them. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, hold the next one down. Hold. Inhale. Exhale. And come on up. Great. We're going to go back to the rope. greatest 
workout skills you can have because you can do it absolutely anywhere. I kid you not, I spent a few weeks in Europe. I ate a lot. It was a really, really fun trip. And without jumping rope my way through Spain and Italy, I definitely would have come back with a few extra pounds. Keep going, everybody, and breathe. We have about 15 seconds to go. So when you throw the hook, 
you're not going to straighten the eye. Think about the hook traveling from ear to ear. Punch and it comes back. So it happens in a pretty short range. A lot of people try to make it too big, but nobody's target or face is really that big. It's tiny, okay? So now let's practice for 20 seconds. On your own, a little trick to the hook is to keep your eyes forward. So you don't want to rotate your head with the punch because you're going to lose your balance. Notice I breathe, my knees stay bent, I soften up my legs. Great. Now, we're going to just do now the rear side uppercut. I'm going to sit and throw the punch, and it's going to go high as if I'm punching off a baseball cap. My right rear, if I'm a righty, if you're a lefty, it's your left rear arm. So I sit and throw the punch. As I throw the punch, I'm going to pivot, and my palm is going to face me. So when the punch is thrown, I screw my fist in and up. Notice that my elbow stays close to my body, so I don't open and shuffle the arm when I throw the punch. Okay, give me 20 seconds practicing just that. My lead arm is still guarding, and if you want to get into a great habit, have your other hand always touch your cheek or your chin every time you throw a punch. So if my right arm is working, my left arm is guarding and touching the left side of my face. Great, you guys. Take a second, take the right arm, stretch it across. Left arm, stretch it across. Nice. Get a sip of water and come on back. All right, welcome back to the boxing section. So, if you don't have a, a partner to work with and you're not able to actually hit the mitts, um, just shadow box to the air, all right? But we're gonna do this as a mitt partnership workout. If you are new to holding mitts and you find at the end of this video that you need a little bit more tutoring on this, I have a five part series on holding the mitts correctly. The cool thing is each video is only about four to five minutes long. So you can always just do one video as a review before this workout and then add on another video another day. All right, starting with the lead jab, we're gonna just throw your lead jab and go.
switch. So we're going to do it just like we do in class. So Lizzie's going to hold, and I'm going to punch. If you don't have your own set of mitts, we highly recommend ordering some. If you need help with that, let us know because there are good products on the market and there are pieces of junk on the market. All right, starting with the lead jab for person two. If you are by yourself, do another round, or in a couple minutes we will give you some options for conditioning you can do instead. Lead jab, person two, go.
We have about 25 seconds of this. And you want to think of exercises you can do if you're training alone when person two is doing their boxing work. Excellent. Now we're going to be on our back for the last minute. One minute left if you are doing a boxing round. We are going to go alternating side crunches. This is one of my favorites. I'm going to go crunch, I'm going to roll. Crunch, roll. You want it two on each side, you can do it that way. So, if this is going to be one of your core movements for the rounds, training alone, you can do it as a progressive. One rep on each side, two reps on each side. The ideas are endless. Five seconds. And time. All right, so get some water and then we are going to move on. All right, moving on to the cross hook. It's honestly just one of the prettiest boxing combinations there is. It's a basic combination of what we call a two, three. I'm going to give you a little tip before we start our round. So I'm going to throw a right cross, or if you're lucky, it's your left hand first. This is a straight punch, it doesn't swing and it doesn't wind up. The hook comes from a tight position. I do not open up this punch at all. I wind back to this left side very tight. As my right cross comes back, my left hook comes out. And then I reset. So I go right cross, left hook. Again, right cross, left hook. Notice that my elbow is in line with my wrist. My elbow is never below my wrist. Once your elbow drops below the wrist, you're going to actually feel it in your wrist. Now, does your palm go forward or does your palm go down? It doesn't matter. It is a style preference. All right? So, cross. All right. Take a deep breath. Starting our round right now and begin. see the positioning of the hand and the elbow.
You can punch again, or you can do a push-up plank to a side plank, and then move on to side crunches again with the progressive. One rep, one rep, two, two, three, three, four, that minute long round. Okay, person two, begin now.
front to the side, then the other side, alternating, and begin. So Lizzie's doing another version of it. This would be a modification. I come up, I do one rep, I go down. I do a crunch, and then to go left, right, then I come down. Come up, I go right, left, down. If you're doing the version I'm demonstrating, make sure you're not yanking on your neck or straining the muscles in your neck. You have to anchor these feet, otherwise you're going to find that you're going to uh, basically just kind of fall apart in your legs. You don't want to do that. Excellent. All right, we're going to finish with a Russian twist, which is pretty much um, a pretty classic boxing abdominal movement. Feet on the ground. If you need more support, progression feet up and go. You're going to rotate side to side. Once again, here's the modification. Heels on the ground. I like to keep my knees together and my ankles together. Progression can be that you add the swing of the lower leg, the lower body, opposite direction than the way you're crunching. And time. All right, we're going to go on to our knees. Whether you are new to boxing or not, I recommend stretching out your forearms and your hands. Just kind of from a kneeling position, turn your fingers back towards your knees. If you need more stretch, just walk your hips and everything back further. Great. Okay, you guys. Continue to do any additional stretches that you need. Uh, we are really happy that you joined us for a boxing workout, and we hope to see you soon in the gym. And if you're not from our community, reach out, reach out to us and let us know how your workouts.